monks and nuns who make jelly, coffee, chocolate, caskets, and much more Monday musings. I'm sure all of us have heard of monasteries where monks are, where they typically uh, spend their life basically praying for the entire world. And so often priests get asked, what do you do all day? And you could imagine monks who many live in cloisters, which means they don't even talk um, throughout the day unless it's absolutely necessary. So you can imagine um, they get asked a lot what they do all day. Their lives are very active, just to give you a simple, um, you know, what one monastery does each day. They get up at 3.10 in the morning, then they pray at 3.30. Then they have some personal times, a little light breakfast, which is around 4 o'clock in the morning. Then at 6 o'clock in the morning, they have morning prayer, and that's followed by the Eucharist. Then at 8 o'clock in the morning, their great silence ends. That's when they can't say anything um, from the night before. Then they do some manual labor, um, and they break from that around 10 o'clock, where they have mid-morning prayer. Then 12.15, they have their midday prayer that's followed by their communal meal. Then at 1, they get a little time to either rest or walk. And then at 2 o'clock, they do their mid-afternoon prayer. Then 4.30, they have time for prayer, reading, exercise. 5.40, they pray evening prayer, followed by a light supper. 7.40, they go to night prayer. And then at 8 o'clock, it's grand silence, and they most likely would go to bed. So you can tell being in a monastery, even though they're, um, you know, uh, some of them are <clears throat> cloistered contemplatives, meaning they won't even speak unless absolutely necessary. Their lives are obviously uh, very busy. One of the ways monasteries typically support themselves is they'll often produce things um, that they can sell. So because monks are spending so much time praying for us, even though we probably have never met a monk, um, even though that's the case, um, they are still praying for us. And so we can support them by some of the products that they sell. So I'm just going to talk to you about um, some of those. We seem to be now in the era of the ecological revolution and um, where we're into this, you know, new movement of everything being sustainable, organic. Important to notice monks have actually been doing that long before it was a trend. Um, monks typically only consume what they absolutely need um, and uh, they have very little waste in their monasteries. Um, and, uh, you know, so often they grow their own, you know, fruits and vegetables in their monastery. Sometimes they even have animals where they um, make much of their own food. So um, here are some uh, ways that you can support monks, um, especially because we're probably eating at home a lot of, um, a lot more. Uh, this is gonna be um, a lot about food. Um, so uh, some ways to support some monasteries. Um, first of all, you can go to monasticgreetings.com. This is basically the mecca of all things monastic. Um, it was started in 1997, and basically they wanted to bring all of these monastic goods that are produced, um, and they wanted to reach a wide audience. So basically, they sell just about anything from monasteries, abbeys, hermitages, um, and I'm going to have to use notes because I can't remember all this. They sell baked goods, they sell cheese crisps, chocolate, candy, coffee, tea, condiment seasonings, Honey, syrup, kitchen and cooking supplies, clothing, jewelry, mugs, soaps, beer, beer glasses, and a whole bunch of other things. So basically anything you ever want from a monastery, all these um, individual monasteries or abbeys I'll talk about, um, you can just go to monasticgreetings.com and you can pretty much purchase anything um, that would be, uh, you know, available from these monasteries. If you're interested in fudge, um, there is the Abbey of Gethsemane. Um, their website's gethsemanefarms.org, and they are monks of the Order of Cistercians of the Strict, Strict Observance, which are also called Trappist. And they were established in 1848 in Kentucky. Um, if you ever heard of Thomas Merton, he belonged to that particular monastery. And all their goods are homemade, and they're most um, known for their fruitcake and also their fudge. They have chocolate fudge, peanut butter fudge, raspberry fudge, salted caramel, coconut fudge, bourbon fudge, and a whole bunch of others. So if you like fudge, you may want to go there. Another um, abbey that's known for their fudge, uh, they're located in Oregon, and they are the Brigantine Monks. And they've been around since 1370, so they've been around a while. They've only been in Oregon, I believe, since 1988. And they make uh, small batch fudge and also small batch truffles. So if you like truffles or fudge, you may want to go there. They have a whole bunch of flavors, chocolate, praline, praline fudge royale with walnuts, amaretto. All their truffles are hand-rolled. So um, again, they're hand-rolled in small batches. And they have flavors like caramel truffles, cherry chocolate, milk chocolate, iced mango, iced lemon, salted caramels, mint chocolate, and a whole bunch of other ones. So one final abbey that also uh, produces fudge is Our Lady of Mississippi Abbey, and they are in Iowa. And their website's monasterycandy.com. And these are a group of actually contemplative nuns. 
And they make uh, coated caramels, caramels, mints, candies, truffles, caramel sauce, and a whole bunch of others. Reader's Digest actually named them one of America's 100 best. And Reader's Digest was basically searching for the best people in America, the best um, you know, innovations. And this was a couple years ago. And they named uh, this monastery as one of their 100 best. So I can't say I've tried their chocolates. Um, uh, the Abbey of Gethsemane, I actually have had their fudge. Um, I can't say I've had theirs. Reader's Digest seemed to be impressed with them, so I'm sure it's uh, worthwhile. Probably the one I'm most familiar with, if you like jams and jellies, it's the Monks of St. Joseph Abbey in Spencer, Massachusetts, and they've been there since 1950. Uh, they're also a cloistered monastery of monks of the Cistercian Order of the Strict, Strict Observance, which are also called Trappist. Again, a lot of these monasteries are going to be Trappist. They have all kinds of jams, jellies. I've been on retreat there. Basically, all these monasteries, if you ever want to go on retreat, you can certainly go on retreat to most of these monasteries. I've been on retreat there a couple times. The parish, actually, they also make vestments. And St. Catherine's Parish, we have a lot of, uh, we have some of their vestments um, from that abbey there. They're jellies. They have blueberry, apricot, pomegranate, boysenberry, peach, hot pepper, a whole bunch of others. If you like conserves, they have those. Wegmans actually used to uh, sell um, their jams. They're called, you know, Trappist jams. Um, so their label was very identifiable. I'm not sure if they actually, uh, if Wegmans still does sell them. Um, we don't have a Wegmans around here. Apparently there might be one coming to Middletown, my favorite supermarket. Um, recently they also started brewing ale. So they have a Trappist ale, um, Trappist Monk's Reserve, Trappist Imperial Stout. Um, so uh, another way of... Um, if you like beer, um, you certainly can uh, purchase uh, some beer um, along with their jams and jellies. If you happen to be into candy, Mount St. Mary's Abbey, which is also in Massachusetts, trappistcandy.com. Again, they're Cistercians of the Strict Observance, also Trappist. And they've been in Massachusetts since 1949, and they've been making candy since 1956. Um, and they actually learned, that abbey I just spoke about, St. Joseph's Abbey, they actually learned how to make candy from them. They have chocolates, hearts, squares, organic, um, organic honey, and they have fruits and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you happen to like coffee, um, there is the Monks of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. So this is a group of Carmelite monks, and they're located in Wyoming, and their website's mysticmonkcoffee.com. They've actually been uh, highly rated on coffeereview.com, so they have uh, garnered some attention um, with their coffee. And if you have a Keurig, many of us use Keurigs for our coffee, um, the, most of their coffee is compatible uh, with the Keurig. And you can actually get a monthly subscription where they send you some. They have a whole bunch of brews. They have the Mystic Monk, Mystic Monk Blend, Paradiso Blend, Butterscotch Cream, Midnight Vigil, Prayer, uh, Royal Rum, Pecan, Dark Roast. They have Decaf if you're into Fair Trade. Their Midnight Vigil is Fair Trade. They also have tea, black tea, green tea, uh, herbal, lemongrass, mint, Mystic Blend. They have all kinds of gifts, t-shirts, mugs. Obviously, they sell us coffee. Um, they're going to sell some uh, mugs also for their coffee. Um, so, uh, next, if you're into beer and wine, uh, monks have actually been making beer for a very long time. Um, there is, uh, the, let's, what are they called? The Benedictine Monks of Norcia. They're actually located in Italy. I actually have bought this beer as gift for others. Um, their website's beernurcia.com. Again, I'll have all these, or just go to mystic, uh, um, go to, um, mon monasticgreetings.com. Their beer, Nursia Extra, is described as beguiling dark brown hue with luminous ruby reflections and a creamy froth head. And they also have um, some other ones. Uh, in 2011, they were awarded the edition of Slow Food Beers of Italy. Um, and that, uh, I guess that award um, called them unmissable. Their region was actually struck in 2016, um, this monastery, um, or in Umbria, um, that region was struck by a very serious earthquake and much of the surrounding area was destroyed. In that area, every church was completely um, destroyed by that earthquake, except for um, this group of Benedictine monks, Benedictine, mo Benedictine monks. And um, so their church was heavily damaged, but it wasn't destroyed like all the other churches. And um, this monastery is in the birthplace of St. Benedict. So St. Benedict is the founder of, you know, Western monasticism. And they established this monastery not too long ago in the birthplace of um, St. Benedict. Um, so very unique. Um, and 
for when I gave the gift to people. Uh, they seem to like the beer. They also have these chalices, beer mugs that you can get. If you like wine, there's a community of Trappist Cistercians. Again, they seem to be making a lot of these goods. And they have um, some handcrafted wines that they make from California. They've received a whole bunch of awards. I can't say I ever heard of them or tried their wines. But if you like them, you might be interested. It's called NewClairvauxVineyards.com. If you happen to be into bread and biscotti, monksbread.com. They're Trappist monks of the Abbey of Genesee, and they're in western New York, and they're mainly known for their bread and biscotti, um, monks' bread. You probably can tell why. And they've been breaking bread since 1953. Uh, they have breads, white bread, whole grain, cranberry, raisin cinnamon, maple cinnamon. They have um, biscotti and twice-baked cookies. They have these fruit and nut bars, fruit and nut bars, monks' chocolate espresso, mixed nuts, uh, mango and a whole bunch of others. They also sell coffee if you want to um, have some coffee with your uh, biscotti. So then uh, after that, um, if you like creamed honey, I'll only bring this one up just because I went on a retreat there one time. This is Holy Cross Abbey in Virginia and it's monasteryfruitcake.org. They're also um, Cistercians of the Strict Observance, also Trappist, as you can tell. Trappists are very popular with these products, and they've been, um, you know, selling their products for over 50 years. They're creamed honey. It's um, locally sourced honey from in Virginia, and they also, it has the quality of butter, so it's very soft and spreadable, um, and so, uh, you know, it's actually very tasty. And their abbey was founded in 1950, and there is a, uh, um, it was founded near a civil, um, a civil war battleground. Kind of most unique now, we'll get out of the food items, um, is uh, a whole bunch of monks, a couple of different groups of monks that make caskets and urns. So if you're planning a funeral and you'd like to support a monastery in the process, there are the uh, trappistcaskets.com, the monks of New Melaroy Abbey, I'm not, probably not saying that right, founded in 1849 in Iowa, and the caskets are made by the monks and others, and all the um, caskets are handmade. Um, and they're also, each casket is blessed by a monk. And they only use premium, premium wood from, a, from sustainable forest in their area. Relatively cheap, I'm guessing, somewhere a little over a thousand to, you know, upwards of, you know, 300 and a little over 3,000. They have some urns, all their owns are uh, hand thrown. Um, so again, uh, you know, very uh, uniquely, each casket is uniquely crafted. There's also the Monks of St. Meinrad Arch Abbey, which they, uh, abbeycaskets.com. They also have handcrafted wooden caskets, urn, keepsake crosses. You can get, you know, um, you know more substantial caskets, or you can get just the simple traditional uh, monastic um, caskets. There's lots of monks that produce CDs um, on chant. Many of them have gone on to get billboard awards and, you know, a lot of recognition um, for their chant. I'll just bring up this one just because I've met a couple of these monks. They are the St. Michael's Abbey and they're located in California. And they have a couple chant CDs. They belong to the Norbertine Order. And um, the, some of their chant albums are Together on the Way, Requiem, and um, some other ones. So if you like chant, um, there's lots of monks and sisters that produce uh, chant albums. Many have gone billboard awards. Um, this particular Norbertine Abbey, um, they're actually not contemplative, I'm almost positive, um, but they have a number of, uh, you know, ways of praying with the monks when you can't physically be there by listening to their albums. If you like greeting cards, there are the Conception Abbey in Missouri, which are a group of Benedictine monks, and they are printeryhouse.org, and they have greeting cards, they have stationery, they have prayer cards, they have icons. Um, so, um, you know, if you're into that, um, certainly a way to support monks in the process. And this video is going a little long, so this is my last, I promise. Um, if you're into books, uh, there is kind of a unique book um, by Dolores Hart. She actually left Hollywood um, to become a nun. And she starred, uh, you know, her career really got famous when she um, was in a movie with Elvis. And then she was in a couple other movies with Elvis. She was up for a Tony Award. And she eventually left all that behind. Um, she actually, shortly after meeting Pope John the Twenty Third, when she was filming a movie um, about St. Francis where she was playing Claire, she decided to leave Hollywood and to um, leave her fiancé at the time and to become a nun. And she's at the Regina Laudis Abbey, which I believe is in Connecticut. And... Uh, there was a movie about her in 2012, which was called God is Bigger Than Elvis, because she was very, um, you know, obviously acted with Elvis a couple times. And then she wrote, uh, and this is what I'll include the link for, she wrote an autobiography in 2013, The Year of the Heart, An Actress Journey from Hollywood to Holy Vows. 
So um, just some Monday musings about ways to support some monasteries. Now that we talked about this, maybe you're hungry, maybe you're thirsty, maybe you want to start planning a funeral. Um, these are just some ways that you can support monks um, uh, as you, uh, you know, eat, drink, and even plan your funeral and maybe send some greeting cards. So just some uh, Monday musings. See you soon, St. Catharines.